Show me some love. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Eighth grade unit four, lesson seven. All, some, or no solutions. Problem number one. For each equation, decide if it is always true or never true. A. X minus 13 equals X plus 1. If I add 13 to both sides, the equation reads X equals X plus 14, and this is never true. B. X plus 1 half equals X minus 1 half. That is never true. C. 2 times X plus 3 equals 5X plus 6 minus 3X. Use the distributive property to multiply 2 times x and you get 2x, and 2 times a positive 3, you get a positive 6. And collect like terms, 5x minus 3x, that's 2x. Now the equation reads, 2x plus 6 equals 2x plus 6, and that's always true. D, x minus 3 equals 2x minus 3 minus x. Collect the x's on the right hand side of the equal sign. x is the same thing as 1x, so we have 2x minus 1x, and that's 1x, or x. Bring down the minus 3, and the equation now reads x minus 3 equals x minus 3, and that's always true. E. 3 times x minus 5 equals 2 times x minus 5 plus x. Use the distributive property to multiply 3 times x, and that's 3x, 3 times negative 5, that's a negative 15. Use the distributive property to multiply 2 times x, that's 2x, and 2 times a negative 5, that's a negative 10, and bring down the plus x. Collect like terms. Collect 2x and 1x, that becomes 3x. 3x minus 15 does not equal 3x minus 10, so that is never true. Problem number two. Mai says that the equation 2x plus 2 equals x plus 1 has no solution because the left-hand side is double the right-hand side. Do you agree with Mai? Explain your reasoning. 2x plus 2 equals x plus 1. Let's collect the x's on the left-hand side. So we'll subtract 1x from the right and subtract 1x from the left to keep it balanced. Now the equation reads 1x, or x, plus 2 equals positive 1. Well, we need to get rid of the 2 on the left-hand side to get the x alone. So we have to subtract 2 from the left side and subtract 2 from the right side to keep it balanced. Since x equals negative 1 is a solution, then I can disagree with my. Problem number 3. A. Write the other side of this equation so that it's true for all values of x. Use the distributive property to multiply 1 half times 6x, and half of 6x is 3x, and 1 half times negative 10. 1 half of negative 10 is negative 5. Bring down the negative x and collect like terms. We have negative 1x and 3x. So 3x minus 1x is 2x. So now the equation reads 2x minus 5. The other side of the equation could read 2x minus 5. B. Write the other side of the equation so it's true for no values of x. All I have to do is make a little change. I can change the 2x minus 5 to 2x plus 5 and it would be true for no values of x. Problem number four. Here is an equation that is true for all values of x. Elena saw this equation and says she can tell 20 times x plus two plus 31 equals four times five x plus 10 plus 31 is also true for any value of x. How can she tell? Explain your reasoning. I'm going to use the distributive property to multiply 20 times x, that's 20x, and 20 times a positive 2, that's positive 40. I'll bring down the positive 31, and on the other side of the equal sign, I'll use the distributive property to multiply 4 times 5x, that's 20x, and 4 times a positive 10, that's positive 40. And I'll bring down positive 31. 
Now it's pretty easy to tell because both sides of the equation have the same terms. Problem number five from eighth grade, unit four, lesson four. Elena and Lynn are trying to solve this equation. Describe the change they each make to each side of the equation. A, Elena's first step is to write three equals seven halves x minus one half x plus five. There's a one half x missing from the left hand side of the equal sign and there's a negative one half x added to the right side of the equal sign. So Elena's first step was subtracting one half x from each side. That's the same thing as adding a negative one half x to each side. B. Lynn's first step is to write x plus six equals seven x plus ten. The half x doubled and became one whole x. The three doubled and became a six. 7 halves x doubled and became 7x, and 5 doubled and became 10. Lynn's first step multiplied every term by 2. Problem number 6 from 8th grade, Unit 4, Lesson 6. Solve each equation and check your solution. Use the distributive property to multiply 4 times 2, that's 8, and 4 times a negative 3x. That's a negative 12x. Bring down the negative 8x and combine like terms. We have negative 12x and negative 8x. That combines to negative 20x. For now, I'll put all the x's on the right hand side of the equal sign by subtracting 3x from both sides to keep it balanced. Negative 3x is canceled out on the left side and negative 20x plus a negative 3x is negative 23x on the right side. To get the x by itself, I have to subtract 8 from both sides of the equal sign. On the right hand side, the 8 is canceled out. Negative 6 minus 8 equals negative 14 on the left hand side. Since both sides of the equal sign are negatives, I'm going to multiply both sides by a negative 1, making both of these terms positive. I want just 1x, so I need to divide 23x by 23, and to keep it balanced, I need to divide 14 by 23. Now the equation reads 14 23rds equals x, so x equals 14 23rds. Now we have to check our solution by substituting all the x's with 14 23rds. I'm going to use the distributive property to multiply 4 times 2, that's 8 and 4 times negative 3 times 14 23rds. I'm going to combine these like terms. I have negative 12 times 14 23rds and negative 8 times 14 23rds. That combines to a total of negative 20 times 14 23rds. I'm going to get rid of the positive 8 on the right hand side of the equal sign by subtracting 8 from both sides of the equal sign to keep it balanced. And I'm going to subtract 3 times 14 23rds from both sides of the equal sign. Let's find out what negative 23 times 14 23rds equals. The 23 cancels each other out. Now we have negative 14 over 1. The equation reads negative 14 equals negative 14. So we've just checked our solution. Use the distributive property to multiply 3 halves times z, that's 3 halves z, and 3 halves times positive 6, that's positive 9. Subtract 1 half z from both sides of the equal sign to balance it out, and you have 6 equals 1z plus 9. Subtract 9 from both sides, and you have negative 3 equals z. Now we can check our solution. Let's substitute all the z's with a negative 3. 1 half of negative 3 is negative 1.5. 6 minus 1.5 is 4.5. 6 minus 3 is 3. 3 halves times 3 equals 9 halves. 9 divided by 2 equals 4.5. We just checked our solution. 4.5 equals 
Since we have more w's on the right hand side of the equal sign, I'm going to get rid of 8 on both sides to get the w by itself. To get rid of the minus 7w, I have to add 7w on both sides. Now the equation reads 1 equals 15w. I want to know what the value is for 1w, so I have to divide both sides by 15. Now the equation reads 1 15th equals w, or w equals 1 15th. Now that we know w equals 1 15th, we can substitute 1 15th for all the w's. Subtract 8 from both sides. Add 7 times 1 15th to both sides. And now the equation reads 1 equals 1. We just checked our solution. Problem number 7 from 8th grade, Unit 3, Lesson 12. The point with coordinates negative 3 and 6 is on a line with a slope of 4. A. Find two more points on the line. Slope of 4 means y minus y over x minus x equals 4 over 1. Let's substitute the first y with the 6. 6 minus y equals 4. 6 minus what number equals 4? 6 minus 2 equals 4. In the new ordered pair, y equals 2. Now substitute the first x with the negative 3. Negative 3 minus x equals 1. Negative 3 minus what number equals 1? Negative 3 minus a negative 4 equals 1 because minus a negative is like a positive. So that would be negative 3 plus 4 equals 1 or 4 minus 3 equals 1. Negative 4 would be the value for x in our new ordered pair. The instructions say find two more points on the line. We found one point, now we have to find another. Let's plug in the values for x and y from our new ordered pair. 2 minus what number equals 4? Well, 2 plus 2 equals 4, so let's go with 2 minus a negative 2. In this new ordered pair, y equals negative 2. Let's find the value for x when y is negative 2. Negative 4 minus what number equals 1? Negative 4 minus a negative 5 equals 1 because minus a negative makes a positive. So this would be like negative 4 plus 5 equals 1 or 5 minus 4 equals 1. The values for this ordered pair are negative 5 and negative 2. B. Write an equation for the line. To write an equation for the line, I know that y equals the slope times x plus the y-intercept. So I need to know what the slope is, and I need to know what the y-intercept is. Let's start with the y-intercept. When the value for x is 0, the y-value is the y-intercept. For this line, I think the order pair for the y-intercept is 0 and 18. Let's double check. y minus y, 18 minus 6 equals 12. x minus x, 0 minus a negative 3 equals 3. 12 divided by 3 equals 4. The slope of this ordered pair is 4, so it checks out. The y-intercept is 18. Since the slope is 4, we can multiply 4 times x, and the y-intercept is 18. We have everything we need to know to write the equation because we know that y equals the slope times x plus the y-intercept. Now we know the equation. y equals 4x plus 18. Help me disrupt YouTube's algorithm by liking this video, commenting on this video, sharing this video, and subscribing to my channel. Thanks. I appreciate it.